Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Study Tips from a professor that wants you to learn faster, better, smarter, with less effort. This is the second in this year's series on these topics. Uh, I have a previous video. I'll provide the link down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, especially focused towards those interested in construction, construction management, all things construction. All right, so the things that we're gonna look at today are recall, space practice, and interleaving, not necessarily in that order. We'll take a look first at interleaving and space practice and how this can help you. Uh, you're starting out the semester, we're just getting into it a little bit. This is an opportunity for you to sort of bear down a little bit and see how you can better uh, retain this information, make it stick better uh, so that it's more useful for you in the future. You really want to get down to first principles. If you can really learn the basic fundamentals of the topic that you're learning, then it becomes easier to solve a lot of problems in the future and you can apply it a lot easier in practice, which makes things a lot better for you. So interleaving, the practice of interleaving is the concept of switching between ideas when you study. So for example, if you learned something last week or the week before and you want to learn, you know, you want to recall it, uh, you're learning the stuff this week, but you're also mixing in some of the stuff from last week and the week before and the week before that. If you just sort of learn in a linear fashion, what happens is that you forget. Uh, you know, the stuff that was four or five weeks ago, you forget. And then comes a midterm test or a final test. And you're trying to struggle to remember some of that stuff that was earlier on. Not only that, with interleaving, a lot of this stuff connects. Usually most courses, a lot of the information connects from beginning to end. So you want to be refreshing your mind of things that you've learned earlier with things that you're currently learning. Then you'll start to see connections about how you can apply this information better. In other words, it helps you to see the big picture more clearly, um, that asset. So for example, if you're reading uh, or you're studying a textbook and uh, you've done the first four chapters, well, as you're going through, say, chapter five, go back and review the high points of chapter one, two, three, four quickly, maybe not as in depth as you're gonna spend time trying to learn chapter five but when you start doing that on a weekly basis going back and forth it's helpful the other thing is if you only learn in a linear fashion it's hard for you if you have an exam and the questions are from different points and they're all shuffled randomly as is typically the case uh, it's not in a linear order and so it's difficult for you so this aspect of going back and forth and I would even you know hazard to say go chapter five look a little bit at chapter one look a little bit at chapter two three not necessarily in the exact order so that you can better um, retain that information and fit the pieces of puzzle uh, together it's kind of like when I've started to learn the piano in recent years and I find it's, a, it's amazing that when you're playing a piece, uh, you learn to play this piece. But the problem is, let's say you wanted to start halfway or you get, you get cut off partway into the song, you wanna start up again. You know what, it's hard to start at a different point if you're used to always starting from the beginning. You actually have to practice being able to jump in at different points so that you can start up. Maybe you get distracted, interrupted, and then it's like you gotta go back to the beginning to finish the piece. Uh, but if you're interleaving that learning and you're used to jumping in at different points and jumping out at different points, it's much easier uh, to be really good at playing that uh, piece that you've been working on on uh, the piano as an example. I'm assuming it's like that for all the instruments. Uh, so learning is a lot like that and interleaving can be a helpful tool uh, that way. Now the, uh, the other aspect, and of course, I just want to clarify, it's not, it's not the same as multitasking. Multitasking is not interleaving. Multitasking is trying to do several things at once. Interleaving is just not doing it in a linear fashion all the time, it's about going back, coming forward. So multitasking is trying to do things at the same time and on different on different topical areas and things like that. And that's 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 not a good thing. So definitely you don't want to have your cell phones open and other things interrupting you. 
that way. It's quite different. Uh, and you'll find in most courses and areas that you're studying in, a course generally has a topical area, and there's a lot of connection points between the topical areas that you're studying. All right. So it should be combined uh, also with other study methods that you're trying to work on. Space practice. Okay, so this is the other one. You know, interleaving. Well, space practice basically means don't think that you can cram for stuff and really retain any of the information well. And the problem a lot of students run into is that you're on a multi-year program and as I said a lot of the courses even interact they don't always but a lot of them do like in construction management uh, they definitely do and so you know if you're always cramming you're not retaining much after the exam you're not doing that well on the exam you're stressing yourself in preparation for the exam uh, and who can study for eight hours straight? You can say you studied for eight hours straight, but your mind was wandering. Uh, you weren't studying for eight hours. Nobody can focus for that long a period of time. So you got to kind of look at uh, how things are best done and look for ways of doing things in a much more successful way. So re review material, not immediately after class. Uh, you know, when we're talking about space practice, uh, that's the other thing wait a day or two have a little bit of a space in between that's the other thing with space practice have a little bit of a space in between so you just did the prac uh, the class you might get, do a quick review that evening but give it a day or two that you've got a little bit of a space and then go into it and try again uh, and go into it so you've got incremental spaces as opposed to you know recency there's this recency thing where we try to just look at what we recently did, but as it gets further away, we don't look back at it. So um, having spaced practice, not cramming on things is very helpful. Uh, the other thing is too, uh, to have little bits of time frame so that you can relax your, your mind a little bit. So as I said, you know, cramming uh, is not good. Uh, and we have a lot of difficulty for really focusing. The research kind of shows, you know, you got about a 25 minute, most people, 25, a 25 minute uh, focus or attention span. You start going beyond that, it gets pretty difficult. So the Pomodoro technique, you might want to try that. The Pomodoro technique is the technique of doing something for a period of time and taking a short break. Doing something for a short time, doing a short break. And it's called Pomodoro after, you know, the egg timer that was kind of shaped like a tomato. Um, that's the only reason for that. And the Pomodoro method is you take the timer, you set it for, you might have to start smaller because maybe your focus isn't that good these days with iPhones and everything else distracting us. We're all struggling a little bit with that. So you might have to build up your mental muscle a little bit. Start like with 15 minutes or 20 minutes, really focusing and then take a five to 10 minute break. All right, especially if it's if it's like 15 minutes, take a shorter break, like five minutes. If you're doing like 25, 30 minutes, you might take a five to 10 minute break. And then you go back at it and you study again for a period of time, right? And so that can be helpful as well using the Pomodoro technique. Uh, so yeah, when I think about the uh, techniques that we use, there's also uh, recall. And so recall is you look at something, you really try to focus in on it, take, a, take a, a, a minute or two, and then look away and see if you can recall it, right? It's really sort of exercising that short-term memory and trying to put it more into long-term memory. Uh, it's, it's very much, uh, you know, somebody gives you their name at a uh, meeting or an event, and most people forget the name seconds after they've been given it to them. But if they take a few seconds after you got the name, right, first repeat the name and then a few seconds after and repeat it, try to recall it, then it starts to stick. So when we think about recall, it's like looking at something because we read things and it's sort of like we read five pages and it's like, what did I just read? Right. So it's actually reading something. You're seeing something that you think is important and looking at it and then looking away and trying to recall that. Uh, that can be a very useful tool in helping you to retain that information. That's much better than highlighting it and just going back over and over it again. It's better to, you know, you look at it, you look away, 
and you try to recall the important points or you try to write down the important points and that can uh, help if you do that frequently it'll really help you sort of retain that information and these are a few tips that will help you to uh, learn faster because we're all constricted for time and better meaning that you'll retain it longer you're doing it in a method that can become very habitual for you and you can improve upon it like the pomodoro technique for example you can improve upon that you can go from 20 minutes to 25 minutes to 40 minutes to 45 minutes if you're focusing but there are limits like i said to attention span and when you take a five to ten minute break a lot of times your your mind is working on that if you take a short little walk um, your mind is still percolating on that and usually after three or four uh, Pomodoro techniques or five Pomodoro techniques you take a longer break and that half an hour um, break is where it so, sort of really starts to sink in it also rests your mind on those topics so I hope you've enjoyed this week's session on uh, ways to learn faster better and smarter with less effort if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel it helps out and click on the notifications so you see new videos as they come out I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and happy learning. We'll see you next time. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. Bye for now.